Hi, my name is Kelly Ruby. I'm a humanities teacher at Moraine Valley, and this video is for the Moraine Valley Reads program through the library. So we were asked to choose a book that is important to us or that has impacted us in some way or just a favorite book. And it was hard to choose. There are so many that I love, many of the ones that I teach and use in class and many others that I just love in my spare time. Um, reading's always been one of my favorite hobbies ever since I was little. Um, in fact, even when I was young, my favorite TV show growing up was uh, Reading Rainbow, which I realize is a little bit nerdy. Um, but I always liked it, and I liked watching the kids do their uh, book reports on the show so that I could create my own reading list. Um, but the book that I wanted to talk about today is not one that I teach. It's not one I use in class. It's not a traditionally academic book. Um, but it's one of my favorites. Uh, the book is called Replay by Ken Grimwood. And uh, this is technically, you know, genre-wise, it's technically a science fiction book or fantasy, but it's not really magic and fantasy type of way that you might think. Um, the premise of the book is that the narrator is a man named Jeff Winston. It takes place in the 80s. And the book begins in 1988 when Jeff, on page one of the book, has a heart attack. Uh, he's about 43 years old, and I'm giving nothing away to tell you that on page two he dies. Um, but on page three, Jeff opens his eyes, and he finds himself back in 1963, smelling familiar smells and sort of seeing things that look vaguely familiar, although he's disoriented. And he realizes that he's 18 years old again, back in his college dorm room. And he has all of the memories from his previous life. All the memories, all the knowledge, all the information, you know, gleaned over an entire lifetime. And he's, you know, kind of confronted with the question of what should he do with all this knowledge? He realizes he's been given this chance to, you know, replay his life. So he decides, kind of what I think most of us would decide, which is uh, let's make some money off of this, right? He knows the outcome of all the presidential elections, the World Series games. Uh, he knows which horse to bet on in the Kentucky Derby. Um, he uh, also knows what inventions are going to become really popular. He knows what stock to purchase in the stock market. And so he does what I think a lot of us would do. You know, if I had a time machine and I could go back to March of 2020, I might heavily invest in Zoom. But as the book progresses, um, Jeff gets back up to age 43. He has accumulated untold wealth. You know, he is enormously successful in a financial point of view. Uh, but at age 43 in 1988, Jeff dies again. And he wakes up again at age 18, again, back in his college dorm room. And this is where the book gets really interesting because it does not turn into a Groundhog Day type of thing where Jeff just keeps making the same decisions and reliving the same moments over and over. You know, instead, he really has to ask himself, what does he want out of life? Which, of course, then makes you as a reader ask yourself the same kind of question. How do you define success? You know, is success because you have a great job or because you earn a lot of money and you're financially stable? Um, Jeff starts to ask him, himself questions that are a little bit more, you know, personal. Is success based more on family or friendship or love? And at times, you know, the book can be really heartbreaking too. If you knew falling in love and, and having a child would bring you happiness, but at the same vein, you knew that in a few years you would lose that life, you would lose that love, you might lose that child. If you had a chance to go back and do it again, would you want that same path? You know, would you want different choices? Would you want a different outcome? Um, Jeff also meets other fellow replayers during the book, um, other people who are on the same journey as him which is actually one of the best parts of the book as they realize, you know, who else has the same knowledge of the future. Um, one replayer in particular he connects with, and it's kind of a fun passage when they realize that they both have the same knowledge of the future. The book also has, a, you know, some questions about uh, historical implications. 
What kind of responsibility do you have to the past? It's not a coincidence that Jeff wakes up in 1963 with plenty of time before November of 1963. Should he go back? Should he try to prevent the assassination of JFK? You know, should he try to change the fabric of time? Or should he let the events play out as they're supposed to play out because that's what's supposed to happen? I think Jeff as a character really struggles with that and it makes us sort of question ourselves, what would we do if we found ourselves in the narrator's shoes? I think about this every time I read the book, every time I go back to it and choose different passages. If I was 18 again, would I pick the same career? Would I pick the same path? Would I live in the same city? Would I choose the same types of things and decisions? Um, sometimes when I can't fall asleep at night, that's what I tend to think about and what changes I might make or would it ultimately you know, lead you to the exact same path that you're on right now? Um, the other part of the book that I think is really interesting is the epilogue. It, it leaves you hanging. It kind of leaves you a bit on a cliffhanger without saying too much. Um, the certain amount of heartache in the book, I think, rings the, the most true. Um, but you definitely find yourself wondering if Jeff has made the right decisions and if you yourself would do the same. So uh, just to quote Reading Rainbow, and they, all those episodes always ended with, you don't have to take my word for it, um, but it's an excellent book. It's a thought-provoking book, and I hope you get a chance to read it. Thank you. Bye-bye.